Lesson two, exploring the needs of customers. So again, we're still in our professionalism and customer care for fitness instructor section, which is the orange section of your manual. And also page seven onwards of your lap. Okay, so this is what you need to answer those questions. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to compare the different needs of fitness facility customers, identify ways that a fitness facility can meet the needs of different customers, and ways the instructor can help customers have a positive exercise experience. You'll be able to identify ways that an instructor can build social support and inclusion within a fitness environment, as well as ways that the instructor can obtain feedback from customers to support continued exercise adherence, which really just means to help them stick to their exercise schedule or plan. You'll also be able to identify the main products and services offered by fitness instructors and facilities and any ancillary and specialist products or services that they offer as well. And that just means more specific specialist services. You'll be able to describe a range of membership options and contracts offered by fitness facilities and describe a typical customer journey through the fitness facility. You're also going to be able to explain the importance of customer retention for a fitness instructor and facility. So, task one. This is a task for you to do some research. You're going to think about any fitness facilities that you use currently or that you have used previously. What do you use it for? So for example, do you swim? Do you go to the gym? Do you go to classes? Do you use the cafe? Perhaps there's a crash for children. What do you use it for? So you're just gonna write me down five things, at least that you use the facility for, okay? So don't think just, oh, I go to the gym. Do you go to the gym and use the changing facilities? Do you use the cafe? Do you shower there? What is it? Then, removing all barriers, what else would you like access to? So for example, maybe there's a really fancy health club down the street that you've always wanted to go to to feel like a little bit more luxury. Or maybe they do tennis lessons or golf lessons. Taking away all those barriers, what ideal things would you like access to? Okay, so just pause the PowerPoint here for a few minutes, brainstorm five things you use the facility for, and at least three things of what else you would like access to. Okay, so pause right there. Okay, once you have done that, we're going to move on to look at what specific services do gym instructors provide to customers. Okay, so pause the PowerPoint here again and give me five specific services. I'll start you off with one, but you cannot use this as one of your five. Fitness instructors design tailored programs for their clients. Okay, what else do they do? Write me down five things and start the PowerPoint again when you're ready. Okay, you have your five things there. So, some things that gym instructors do, they offer their services, are health screening, tailored program design, induction or orientation into the gym, fitness testing, group exercise, which means that they teach classes, they offer healthy eating advice, exercise demonstrations and supervision and they help their clients change their behaviors okay so let's just talk a little bit about some of these so health screening that just means asking your clients a series of questions either in person or through a questionnaire 
to make sure that they are healthy and ready to go with exercise. Induction and orientation will be something that is set out by your workplace and they will most likely give you a, a template to follow or a program to follow. And we'll also be doing a little bit of group induction work later on. Fitness testing and tailored program design we will be speaking about later on in these um, PowerPoints, so do not worry about those right now. Group exercise just means teaching fitness classes or group classes within the gym. And healthy eating advice. So this is a great one to discuss. Now, we mentioned in lesson one the difference between dietitians and nutritionists. So what you can and can't do as a gym instructor, you cannot give your clients a nutrition plan that you have tailored for them, okay? We can't do that now. What you can do, however, is give them healthy eating advice. So it's general healthy eating advice that would suit a healthy individual and would help them to reach their goals. Okay, but we cannot give them eating plans or diet plans. Okay. We will also do exercise demonstrations and supervisions. So that's just making sure that you are happy with how all exercises work. Obviously, there are an infinite amount of exercises in the world. There's so many, but you need to know the basics because you need to be able to demonstrate with correct form anything that you're asking your client to do, okay? Both in front of you and in a gym program. You also need to be able to supervise that they are doing the correct technique. So if you are at all unsure, the best thing to do is to get some coaching yourself. Get a personal trainer to coach you, teach you the correct technique, and you'll also be learning about this on your practical days in your course. And finally, behaviour change. Again, we will discuss later on in these PowerPoints, so don't worry about that now. So, your next research activity. I want you to look at three different types of gym. First of all, a budget gym. So, maybe you have heard of a pure gym or a gym group or fit for less. Something along those lines, they're cheap to join and they don't have locked in monthly contracts normally. Second of all, a boutique club. So this is something a little bit more specialist, possibly up around the 30, 40 pounds a month membership fee. Um, and these can be part of a uh, chain or independent and a high-end health club. So for example, this is something like David Lloyd's where they are charging up around 80, 90 pounds per month and there's a lot more options of what you can do in these health clubs, okay? It's not just a gym. This is one of your tasks in your lap. So let's just get it done now. Let's pause the PowerPoint. And these need to be in your local area, okay? So even if you've not been to them, you can research online and identify uh, a, one uh, gym or health club for each category here. Talk about the main services or facilities they provide, any additional or specialist services. And then you're just going to write this down into your lap rather than present it to the group today, okay? So, you cannot have the same option for all three options, okay? So, say you pick David Lloyd, or yeah, say you pick David Lloyd, you can't put that for budget gym and boutique club and high-end health club. You need to have a different example for each one. You're then going to outline the main services and specialist services. So take a minute to find that in your lap just now and complete it for me as we're going through. Okay, so pause the PowerPoint here, complete that section, and then we'll come back. 
Okay, now you have completed that question in your lap. We're going to discuss a little bit about different membership options. So, for example, we have annual memberships. Now these normally you either pay for the full year or you sign up to pay monthly for the full year, okay? And you normally can't get out of these, or if you can, they have an early cancel fee. A pay-as-you-go membership is as it sounds. You pay every time you go. It's normally a little bit more expensive, and you don't get discount in the same way that you would if you're paying monthly. But it is good for people who don't want to commit to going regularly. An off-peak membership just means that you can only go at certain times of the day. And these are normally the quietest times. So for example, in your gym, this might be between 9am and 3pm, something like that when you have off peak hours and the gym is quieter. It's normally cheaper, but it does limit the time that you can go. And that's something to consider if you are working with clients who only have off peak memberships, you need to think about when you're making their sessions, okay? Family membership just lets you sign up more than one person in your family. Corporate memberships are normally done through your workplace. They will either come out of your pay before you receive your pay or just means that you get some type of special deal from signing up through your work. Normally a discount or you get something for free. No contract means that you can cancel your membership at any point and these are normally done in monthly blocks so you just cancel before the next month starts. And platinum memberships look different across all gyms. It's normally just the highest level of membership with lots of different benefits and often discounts. Okay. So your typical customer journey. Again, this is a question in your lap. So once I've talked through this slide, just pause here and take some time to complete it. So a typical customer journey normally starts with an inquiry. They are then shown around the gym and hopefully they sign up. Once they have signed up for the gym, they are then passed through to a health screening. Now this is normally done either verbally or it's written down, okay? But you always need to take notes even if this is done verbally. And this is something we're going to practice on course, so don't worry too much. Okay, they then move on to their consultation. Again, this is normally done verbally, again, taking notes, and we will be practicing this on your course as it is part of your assessment. Once you've done your consultation with your client and you've found out their goals, any barriers or motivators that they may have, you'll write them in a, pro a program and often give them an induction into the gym. After this, you can upsell, which may include uh, other services like offering them a personal trainer or whatever else you can do. So say you're a sports masseuse, you can then upsell them your massage services, but it has to be something obviously that you're qualified for. You'll then give them a program review Check that they're doing okay, that they're making progress and they don't have any questions. And then you'll repeat the last stage. So creating them a new program and reviewing it for them each time. Okay, so there's obviously lots of different things that you want to consider in this customer journey and nothing is typical, but you always want to have a process that you can use with your clients that helps you take them from not knowing you to signing up with you and having a great experience with you. You always want to try and encourage your clients to come back and also your fitness facility will want to encourage their, uh, their members to come back as well because it's really important to have that member retention 
within both the fitness facility and your own business. We of course rely on clients to come back to us to give us money, give us memberships and have pay for our services. But it's also a lot easier to retain your members once you have them. It's harder to find new members, get new members to sign up. And it's much easier for you to have repeating members, repeating clients and keep them coming back and retain them. Okay, so for our learning review, we've talked about the differing needs of fitness facility customers. So do you need that budget gym? Do you need that high end gym? We've talked about different ways a fitness facility can meet the needs of different customers. So inductions, program planning, nutritional help, and again, the way that the instructor can do the same. Ways in which an instructor can build social support and inclusion within a fitness environment. I want you to think about whether you've had any positive experiences with this yourself. Often great ways to uh, encourage member support are things like running group classes, running team challenges, group challenges, getting everyone involved in social events, in gym events, in gym challenges. And even if you have individual clients that you think would benefit from meeting other people, set up a small class for them or encourage them to go to the same class at the same time so they meet other people. Ways in which an instructor can obtain feedback from their customers to support continued exercise adherence. This may include verbally or it may be written, okay? So of course you can ask your client verbally but you can also get them to complete a survey for you, uh, whether you go through it with them like on a clipboard or they do it in their own time online. Okay, so we always need to know how the client's getting on and getting that feedback from them. We've talked about the main products and services offered by different facilities. So you've found that in your own research. And again, the specialist products you found in your own research as well. We've talked through the different range of membership options and contracts offered by fitness facilities. We've looked at a typical customer journey through a fitness facility, and we've explained the importance of customer retention. Now, go back to page seven onwards in your lap and fill in the questions that we have discussed here. So that's particularly in regards to client support, and the different setups of each gym. Okay, so take some time to do that now and we'll be right back with lesson number three. <laughs> 